dangerous, and it's anti-American. In his speech, Dr. Martin Luther King, almost 60 years ago to the day, said this in his I Have a Dream speech, quote, when the architects of our great republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, they were signing a promissory note to which every American was to fall heir. This note was a promise that all men, yes, black men as well as white men, would be guaranteed to the inalienable right, rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is obvious today that America has defaulted on its promissory note, insofar as her citizens of color are concerned. Instead of honoring this sacred obligation, America has given its colored people a bad check, a check that has come back marked insufficient funds. But we refuse to believe that the bank of justice is bankrupt. We refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great vaults of opportunity of this nation. So we have come to cash this check a check that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom and security of justice. We have also come to this hallowed spot now to remind America of the fierce urgency of now, unquote. Note that Dr. Reverend King spoke of this land as a great republic and our founding documents as magnificent words of promise. He called the Lincoln Memorial a hallowed spot. There were none of the current notions of America as existentially racist and fundamentally and irredeemably flawed. The very Declaration of Independence, so maligned by so many now, was not wrong in its words, but in its deployment. The Declaration is glorious and a point of hope. Its words were a catalyst for America to be what she had always and will always aspire to be, a land of equal justice, freedom, and opportunity under the law. Today, I fear, we are dangerously far from the colorblind, character-based meritocracy King dreamed of. Increasingly, color is all that matters. If you're a person of color, you are oppressed. If you are white, you are privileged. And this means war. The class struggle of the Marxists becomes the race struggle, struggle of America. We are better than this. And I'm convinced Reverend King knew that and built on that. The use of racist terminology to battle racism is a strange tactic. True love of this land is both mandatory and salutary. If someone uses critical theory to denounce America as irredeemably racist and unjust, they are wrong. Our founding documents and principles are the very foundation on which we must debate and build. Rejecting them is to invite strife and ultimately the destruction of this great land, a land we are summoned to love and to bring greater perfection on account of the love we have for our country and for one another. This is just part of the link that I sent you. Let me close with this lyric. Oh, beautiful for heroes proved in liberating strife, who more than self their country love, and mercy more than life. America, America, may God thy gold refine till all success be nobleness and every gain divine. Please look up that link I sent you. The, the, whole, the whole article is marvelous, and I'd love your response. God bless America. Amen. 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 He said before the wrestling match, he was going to eliminate the handshake. Okay? That sounds pretty idiotic, but I'm, going to, I'm here to tell you that masks are just as idiotic. Uh, if you go to the CDC website, they say very plainly that less than 6% of the people who have died from COVID are healthy people. And they say right there in the same paragraph that the average person who's died from COVID had co four co comorbidities which means the average person who died from COVID had, let's say, heart disease, cancer, high blood pressure, diabetes. If you look at the statistics, it's actually less likely for a person zero to 19 years of age, it's less likely to die from COVID than it is from the flu in an average flu season. Let me just put this in perspective, just so you understand this. The H1N1 pandemic of 2009 killed 10 times more children, but under COVID-19, 
hundred times more schools closed down. It's incredibly inconsistent. It's irrational the way that re people are reacting to COVID, especially by wearing masks. It's absurd. Let me ask you this. Do any of you double mask your children when they go to bed at night? When you put them to bed, you double mask them? That would be more wise than masking students at school. Your kids are more likely to die from smoke inhalation in a house fire than they are to die from COVID. Your children are more likely to die driving to school every day mm -hmm. than they are from COVID. Are you willing to make every car a bumper car with a maximum speed of 20 miles an hour? That's pretty stupid, right? Mm -hmm. You would actually save people by doing that. You're not gonna save anybody by wearing masks. It's absurd. Mm -hmm. Did you realize that, or let me ask you this, what do grapes, popcorn, and hot dogs have in common? Well, I'll tell you what they have in common. They kill more kids, more healthy kids die every year from popcorn and grapes and hot dogs than from COVID. That's true. Are you going to outlaw grapes in the high school? <laughs> well, if you don't, and you insist on wearing masks, you are being completely irrational. It's totally absurd. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable that you can actually do this. It's just crazy. Um, did you know that sports kills more kids every year than COVID? Healthy kids die more in schools playing sports than from COVID. Are you going to eliminate all sports from schools? <laughs> well, if you're not willing to do that, then get rid of the max. It's mm -hmm. totally irrational. It's like you've lost your minds. You're crazy people. This is unbelievable. You know what? It's true. Wrestlers not shaking hands is pretty absurd, but wearing masks is statistically a tie with what that wrestling coach did. Parents should not obey these mask mandates. Yes. And you should not be listening to political organizations like the CDC to make your decisions. Castle.org website, which is the uh, the most uh, sourced uh, source used for teaching social emotional learning, and I'm going to read some more quotes today, like I did last week. And this is this is not from uh, Fox News. This is not from a Dan Bongino podcast. <laughs> this is from a resource that your teachers are using to teach social emotional learning. The Castle.org website. Last week, I summed up what I, what I read from Castle, that the reason people of color have educational inequities today are because white people, white elites, oppressed and exploited people of color. And today, I want to read some, some more quotes found on the Castle.org website. Here's an article entitled, How to Be an Anti-Racist Educator. We cannot afford to wallow in our discomfort regarding issues of race and equity. Some questions for teachers to ask themselves include, how does your power and privilege show up and work with your students? Do you and the academic materials you use uphold whiteness or lift up the voices and experiences of people of color? Acknowledgement, racism, and ideology of white supremacy. Here's some more quotes. Acknowledging the social construct of race and racism and the ideology of white, of white supremacy recognizes the problem. Another quote, knowing our country's whole history makes us, helps us make sense of how our current education system perpetuates inequity. Another quote, for too long we have, we have taught US history devoid of a true depiction of black excellence and have focused on erasing the truth of racial oppression and uplifting whiteness. Another quote, colorblindness fails to acknowledge the impact of racism on all people and further does not push white people to do the important work of reckoning with the legacy of white supremacy in our lives. Another quote, the false premise of colorblindness is often deployed to obscure the discomfort white people have with confronting ongoing and historical racial oppression 
and injustice. Another quote, helping children see the role they have to play in fostering equality and inclusion through racial justice is a critical piece of this project. These are quotes from the castle.org website and they're used in teaching your children. The Every Student Succeeds Council, maybe if some have seen this, is, is on uh, the Goshen Community Schools website, talking about the Every Student Succeeds Council, and the statement of purpose reads, in part, the council works to eliminate the systems in our school culture that sustain bias and discrimination. What systems in our schools are biased and discriminatory. <coughs> I think I know. <laughs> Parents watch out for racially oriented surveys your kids will be taking. They are now part of a great Marxist experiment. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. transmission belts for socialism and current communist propaganda. Soften the curriculum, get control of the teachers' associations. Put the party line in textbooks. Number 18, gain control of all student newspapers. Number 19, use student rights to foment public protests against programs or organizations that are under communist attack. Number 20, infiltrate the press, get control of book review assignments, editorial writing, policy making positions. Number 21, gain control of key positions in radio, TV, and motion pictures. 24, eliminate all laws governing obscenity by calling them censorship and a violation of free speech and the free press. Number 25, break down cultural standards of morality by promoting pornography and obscenity in books, magazines, motion pictures, radio, and TV. Number 26, present homosexuality, degeneracy, and promiscuity as normal, natural, and healthy. Number 27, infiltrate the churches and replace revealed religion with social religion. Discredit the Bible and emphasize the need for intellectual maturity, which does not need a religious crutch. Number 28, Eliminate prayer or any phase of religious expression in the schools on the grounds that it violates the principles of separation of church and state. Number 29, discredit the American Constitution by calling it inadequate, old-fashioned, out of step with modern needs, a hindrance to cooperation between nations on a worldwide basis. Number 30, discredit the American Founding Fathers, present them as selfish aristocrats who had no concern for the common man. 31, belittle all forms of American culture and discourage the teaching of American history on the ground that it was only a minor part of the big picture. Give more emphasis to Russian history since the communists took over. 32, support any socialist movement to give centralized control over any part of the culture, education, social agencies, welfare programs, mental health clinics. 38, transfer some of the powers of arrest from the police to social agencies. Treat all behavioral problems as psychiatric disorders, which no one but the psychiatrist can understand or treat. 39, dominate the psychiatric profession and use mental health laws as a means of gaining coercive control over those who oppose communist goals. Number 40, discredit the family as an institution, encourage promiscuity and easy divorce. 41, emphasize the need to raise children away from the negative influence of parents, attribute prejudices, mental blocks, and retarding of children to suppressive influence of parents. 42, create the impression that violence and insurrection are legitimate aspects of the American tradition, that students and special interest groups should rise up and make a united force to solve economic, political, and social problems. This is what's happening in our education system. I ask you and everyone in this room, are you on the side of American freedom and liberty or are you on the side of communists? Take your position, be warned. guys are doing well. I'm doing well and I'm delighted as all get out to hear some of the comments from my friends tonight. I want to echo very strongly, America is not a racist country. Mm -hmm. And I can tell that just looking across this school board and looking across this audience. This country, as I've said before, was founded on the principles of God and the Bible that every single man, woman, and child are created in the image of God with the yep. same 
rights. Why? Because God gave them. And when we forget that, that's when we go off the wall and pick up such things as critical race theory, SEL, and we start elevating races above each other. Man, we got to get we got to get this straight here. Just because we're white does not mean we're better than anybody else. Just because we're black doesn't mean we're better. Just because we're Hispanic. We've got to come to the realization that we have one creator and one judge that's above us. And if we will realize that, we will straighten this out. You know, I am proud that I'm an American. And I'm also proud that I'm a citizen and a community member of Goshen. Because unlike Marxist communist people in this town think, we, were, we are not a sundown town. We are, in fact, a very conservative Christian town. And I have documents and papers that if you want some, I can give you some right after this meeting that prove so. And you know what? I'm tired of hearing the terms racist thrown at me and my friends, especially from school board members. Guys, that is unacceptable. And if anybody in their right mind will listen, that is just completely unacceptable. Nobody should ever call us racist just for stating the truth. And they want to call me crazy, and they call, say we spew out hate speech. Absolutely not. You know, every student in Goshen Community School, whether they're homosexual, um, heterosexual, transgender, they're all created in God's image, and they all have the same rights. I've stated that before at the city council meeting. But at the same time, I believe that we do not need to pick on the Christians, such as people have been doing in recent days. We are a community with conservative Christian values, and we're founded upon that, and we won't back down from that. And also, one more thing before I close. I mentioned about God instituting the family before. That means God gave and instituted the parents as the legal guardians to decide for children. Parents have the right to choose what's best for their children. Mm -hmm. And I would challenge you as a school board to keep that in mind. We should not mandate masks for all. It should be optional. If parents want to mask their kids, that is fine. They have the right to do so. But if parents do not want their kids masked and muzzled and suffocated for hours at a time during the day, they have that right. I challenge you. Thank you and have a good night. I met a man on Saturday, and he had a little brown daughter in one of our elementary schools. And the little girl went to school this, this uh, last couple weeks, and the teacher said to her, who are you? And she said, well, I'm an American. And the lady said, or the teacher said, um, what do you mean you're an American? Who are you? She said, well, I'm an American. The, lady, the teacher says, well, who, where's your mom and your dad from, and your grandpa and grandma? And she said, well, my mom and dad are from Detroit. And my grandpa and grandma, one of them was from Puerto Rico one time. She said, oh, you're Puerto Rican. And the little girl says, no, I'm an American. <laughs> and I think out of the mouths of babes comes this kind of stuff. It doesn't matter what color we are. We're all Americans. We're all on the same team. Um, I think that kind of thing is just indoctrinating students to think they're different. Um, I look at the ESSER three funding and the grant or the bribe that we took, and we just got $900,000. And this what came out in April, April 23rd of this year. So during, just right after spring break before school got out. And number one for the requirements for in-person instructions was universal and correct wearing of masks. So we knew full and well last April that we were gonna mask kids in the fall. But all summer we played the card and we said, oh, no, no, we're gonna, we're gonna be Troy, you're gonna get to do what you want. Then bam, we're back to masks. Guys, that's not right. That is, you know it's not right. So, we just can't continue to strip the family of their rights to teach values in their own, and, and over, overstep our boundaries as adults. 
Educators are teaching things contrary and, con and confusing to little kids to question what their parents teach, and they're telling our old older students, sometimes you gotta break the rules because sometimes your parents' rules are holding you back. You need to leave our families alone and quit mm -hmm. teaching or trying to manufacture crises. Mm -hmm. The parents are in charge, and you are not. Mm -hmm. And if you can't stop with all that foolishness, you just need to resign from mm -hmm. the board because you're just not being effective. Just stand up and tell people what you're, you're doing. Don't lie to them, it's not right. We lost over 100 students to Fairfield this year. How many more are we gonna lose? That's 20 teachers, who's gonna get pink slip? <laughs> if I have to, I'll stand out front with a megaphone and I'll tell parents the truth because we're not gonna get in, uh, away with indoctrinating kids, not today, not ever. Your job is to teach our kids reading and math. You remember when I first started speaking to you guys, our reading proficiency was 36%. 36% of our high school graduates can't read. We are handicapping them. We don't have time for this other stuff. So pull out of SEL before you all lose your jobs. And I really do, I, I really admire a lot of you guys. I don't know most of you. But I come every month because Dr. Metcalf has cool socks. And if you want me to shut up, just tell Dr. Metcalf to start wearing black socks. No, that's not gonna stop me because I'm an educator and that's how it goes. Thanks. <laughs> I have the megaphone. Rod, call <laughs> We're here because we want to keep our kids safe. I think we can all agree to that. Um, most of us haven't seen the studies on masks. I know we have some strong opinion about masks. Um, no mask is 100%, but you know, I'd rather have a mask that's 70% than a mask that is 20%. Um, I'm a doctor, and I, I treat viruses, and I treat bacteria, and I would like to speak a little bit about community health as opposed to individual rights. Uh, when a community is suffering from a pandemic, a pandemic kills, and in the United States, we have sucked at pandemic. We've lost over 640,000 people. And that sucks, and we've done worse than almost every other country in the world. In my office, uh, I have not forced anyone to get shots. I got mine early in December because I was fortunate. Um, the FDA did approve the COVID vaccine today, thank God, because it does prevent uh, a lot of you are misinformed. Uh, a lot of you have not studied science past college, maybe even past high school. I don't know, but but it is very it is very it is very clear. It's very clear. It's very clear. It's very clear. It's very clear. The science is very clear. You might want to. I have not uh, told my staff that they have to get COVID vaccines, but they all have because they care about people, and I think we should all be caring about. I would ask you as a, as a board to care enough about our kids to protect them. The Delta, the, the Delta variant is much more um, deadly. It does not, no. it is harder on older folks with comorbidities. Yes, it is, that's true. I happen to care about people with comorbidities. I would ask that you no. please address us and please have comments to silent as we're speaking, please. I care about people, and we all should care about people. We should. Um, so how do we how do we work at caring for our children? Um, I don't want us to be like Alabama. I don't want us to be sending people out of state because our hospital is so full. I know nurses at both Goshen and Elkhart General, and I know things are getting full. Um, and I know that they are getting worn out because people are not getting their vaccinations. And it breaks my heart when we have things to help us. We have tools to help us get past a pandemic and we're not using them. So the science is very clear. <laughs> unfortunately, uh, it's become political, unfortunately. You dropped your glasses. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, be careful. Don't step Thank up. you. So please do address us. Um, I do ask respect for everyone. Uh, we've been 
respectful for all this from the, the, the past number of meetings, I would ask that we please continue with that. Uh, Jenna Crawford. Jen Crawford. Um, I'd like to just share a few of the dozens of comments we've gotten from parents, grandparents, community members, and students on the mask mandate. Um, it should be a freedom of choice. If you want your child to wear a mask, send one in. If not, let their immune systems work. Masks cause more harm than good on children, and many studies have shown that they do not work. Please stop this nonsense and abuse for the sake of our children, for their health, their mental health, their ability to learn. Enough of the weightless government control. Our grandson has heart problems and cannot wear a mask all day. He wants to be in school. Let parents make med medical decisions for their children. Masks have proven to not work. If they did, COVID would have spread to those who wore them. It's common sense. You put your mask on and off with your hands. Waitresses have masks on, but stir your drinks, bring them with your hands when you touch them and drink from them. It's a virus, nothing stops them. Eventually it goes through everyone. Best defense is washing hands and faces, eating healthy, taking vitamin C and other important vitamins, and try not to touch people in public. Masks are ridiculous. Masks on <coughs> your children should be called child abuse. You have no scientific evidence to continue this sham. Let's think about the children's mental health. Masks are not based on science and they are perpetuating fear in our children. Please let them wear a mask only if they want to. This should not be mandatory. Against masks due to breathing pain, breathing dangers this has caused us directly. As an older adult who has a niece and nephew with the Goshen School District, I am 100% against a mask mandate. There are numerous studies that have debunked the mask rule. You just have to be willing to do your own research. If a parent wants to make a decision that their child wear a mask, that is the right of the parent, but it's not a school district's responsibility or place to dictate what a parent should do medically for their child. Last time I checked, we were still the United States of America, governed by a document called the US Constitution, which grants certain unalienable rights and enforcing mask mandate infringes on those rights. <clears throat> this is from a student. I was really hoping we wouldn't have to go back to wearing a mask. I don't want to wear it. They are hard to breathe in, especially all day long. My daughter needs to wear glasses. It is hard for her to see with a mask because it clogs her glasses. She cannot see well without her glasses on and not wearing glasses last year made her eyes worse. They need an immune system and masks suppress immunity. Not to mention if dentists can only wear them for 30 minutes, then why are kids forced to do this? Time for these elected officials to go. Children should not be masked. Masks are filthy and they do not keep out bacteria or viruses. Fresh air is precious and needed. Nobody needs to breathe back in the dirty air they just expelled. So gross. <clears throat> Let our children breathe. So those were comments uh, from parents, grandparents, uh, students, and community members that we received. For this opportunity to speak. Lately, the school board have been the school boards have been overstepping their bounds. The school board has no right to make mandates for our children without our knowledge or consent. It is obscene and harmful for our children to be forced to wear masks. This, the science is clear. Private doctors and researchers have done studies that prove children wearing masks in class have done nothing to stop or even slow the spread of a virus and can cause both physical and psychological harm. You have no right to obstruct and restrict oxygen into our children's lungs. One may even say this is a form of child abuse. These masks interfere with our children's ability to develop, to develop a strong immune system while at the same time acting like a petri dish and collecting germs and dirt. Only a few doctors and so-called scientists have been allowed a platform to speak freely 
regarding the unnecessary and negative impacts of children wearing these masks. What happened to open debates and transparency? This is critical in maintaining a well-informed community so that everyone can see all the impacts of a policy, both positive and negative, before making an informed decision regarding their children. The parents are the last line of defense in protecting the proper education of their children. And parents' decision regarding their children supersedes any autocratic policy. The number of children that are passed to the next grade unable to read or write at their grade level is absolutely unacceptable. We must demand a return to a focus on reading, writing, and arithmetic. I demand a total transparency regarding the current curriculum being taught in public schools to all interested parents. This should be provided in writing, on paper, something tangible that cannot later be deleted by the stroke of a computer key. All the fear tactics that have been employed by the left-leaning socialists pitting children against each other by teaching any form of critical race theory needs to be stopped. Mm -hmm. This government-sponsored hijacking mm -hmm. of our public schools, turning them into woke socialist indoctrination camps is absolutely intolerable. Mm -hmm. Any parents who care about their children's health and well-being should do whatever it is necessary to put a stop to it. Consider, one, lawsuits. Two, demonstrations in front of the board members and superintendents' offices and mm -hmm. homes. Move your children to a private school or charter school. Mm -hmm. Homeschool your children or participate sorry, in sorry, homeschooling co-ops where multiple sorry, parents sorry, participate. Oh, my time's up. Robert Waldowski. Hey, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to do a little education here tonight. Hopefully, uh, Bobby up there will pay as much attention to me as he has been to his computer during uh, our comments. Um, thank you, Linda, for bringing up uh, the information about the gear and the ESSER grants. Nine million bucks you guys received, and what was the purpose of it? The purpose of it was to put our children in chains. And as Linda clearly showed you guys the, this ESSER, um, what is required to, uh, in the return to in-person instruction, and Bob knew about this early this year when he said, well, we'll think about making mass uh, elective and then make mass mandatory. But he knew that this was part of the grant that you guys accepted the money for. So you accept the money and then you lie to the citizen. I think the masks look good on you guys. <laughs> Criminals wear masks. So part of this whole this whole uh, ESSER and GEAR grant program has requirements for it. And one of the requirements is to track your children's data. And maybe, maybe the citizens don't know that. But there's a whole guideline to doing that. And he's been teaching the teachers how to implement this tracking of our children's information. And some of the stuff that really got me wild about this is that um, they're, they're collecting data for social emotional learning purposes to identify who needs more support and collaborate on intervention plans to ensure all students have support from trusted adults. Now this is the list of trusted adults. No mention of parents whatsoever in this, but counselors, teachers, interventionists, behavior coaches, principals, uh, district coordinators, and uh, administrators. And they want to gather your kids' information and they want to share it with the government. Share it with the local health board. 
and I was in a meeting today with uh, the supervisors for the county that put through a grant request that they knew nothing about. But it's the same thing to have mandatory vaccinations and mandatory masks to accept the money for the grant. So this is coming down our pipeline, and it's because people aren't being honest to you. Mm -hmm. Now, if you guys don't know that, then I'm gonna blame you for not paying attention and doing your job as elected officials. No, you serve us. We are the employer. Please, please, citizens are gonna know about this. I uh, handed in uh, a bunch of petitions today against this mask Thanks. mandate that you put together. Hey, thank you for your time. I appreciate you being here tonight. Please consider the parents. God bless you. Ed Brookshire. to thank you for the mask requirement that you started today for K through six schools. I have a daughter in fourth grade at Waterford and a son at Goshen High School. I'm a healthcare provider and never had um, the, I, I worked through the entire pandemic and the shutdown and it was really hard that first term of e-learning for both the kids and uh, and then I uh, applaud the school for trying to come up with uh, good solutions uh, for the coming year but I just you know I didn't have any child care and I felt a moral obligation to care for the community as a health care provider during the pandemic um, so for last year's school year I chose to homeschool my daughter because I thought I could have more control over uh, her environment and thought that, and then my high schooler went uh, to school and uh, that, and I was really impressed with how the schools were able to stay in session using the um, policies that we did with COVID last year. And so I re-enrolled her this year for fourth grade and um, was really surprised when school was starting that it was mass optional because I think that uh, your policies <coughs> last year is what allowed for in-person learning for the younger grades for all of that time and with minimal interruption for the older grades. So I would encourage you to still consider the Elkhart County um, Health Department's recommendation as well as CDC for universal masking for K through 12, as well as masking indoors for anyone regardless of vaccination status. I encourage everyone to get vaccinated because uh, prevention is the best medicine. And in the same way that there are community rules and norms that we use to stop at stop signs, wear seat belts and do things to, to protect the greater good and the other people around you, I think that uh, immunizations and masks in the schools can help with that. So thank you for what you're doing for our kids and our community. Well, first, I just want to thank you each for your service. I really appreciate you and the jobs you're doing. I think this is a difficult time for everyone in this room. I know we're all facing a lot of stress. And um, yeah. I'm here also as a health care provider. I did not come with any prepared remarks. I really just thank you for the, the woman who spoke ahead of me. She said everything in my heart. I, I support masks for our children in schools. I believe it is safer for them. I believe we all want what's safe for our children, everybody, even though we have different opinions on what's the best way to do that. But for myself, I will, I just thank you that we do have a mask mandate now and I hope that continues. Um, our vaccination rate in Elkhart County is below 
um, which shows that there is still a lot of room for growth there. And until our, our numbers get higher, the safety, this is not there for our children to have to be doing school without masks. So thank you very much. Karen Andrews. Good evening. I'm going to be very brief. I just have a question prefaced by the statement that I don't think there's anybody here tonight who is not here because they care about the kids. My question is, my search for truth is, can the board provide any peer-reviewed studies that show masks really work? So I would like the board to provide an answer to that and cite a study that shows that. There's several studies. That is everyone that was signed up this evening. Uh, we are we have May taken all of our comments. Sir, respectfully, we had a lot of heartfelt comments. Would you allow your board members to spend just a few moments expressing themselves? Would that be acceptable, sir? The, the board will have an opportunity to speak at the end, as they always do. If they choose to speak, that is up to each individual board member. Thank you. So th this does end the uh, public participation portion of our meeting. Uh, we appreciate everyone uh, that chose to speak this evening. Um, it takes a lot to, to come up, and we appreciate everyone's willingness to do so. Uh, as I said at the last meeting, uh, I do appreciate that we have done our best to be respectful of one another. Uh, there's a lot of differing opinions that exist out there, but in the end, we all do want what is best for our children, and that's what we are all attempting to do here. Uh, I wish there was one magic thing that we could all do that would solve all of this. I don't think there's any one person that doesn't wish that. Uh, but we are continuing to, to listen. We are attempting to take all of the information that we can and, and, and understand what the public is saying. So we appreciate everyone's willingness to come this evening. We'll move on to the closing items, and, and the first is uh, 8.1, any items from the actual board member this evening that you would like to speak on that were not discussed. What about us? Where's our apology? Other comments from the board? Uh, 8.2, uh, any 
Second, all in favor, please say aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all very much.